and welcome back everyone here to the Stuttgart Regional Championships. Um, we are here with the second round and what an exciting game that we have on our hands here. Exactly, it's going to be a Spanish face-off. We have got Miguel Marti de la Torre versus Alex Gomez. So two formidable opponents. Um, Miguel, I remember him most for winning the first ever European International Championship yes. back in 2016. And then Alex Gomez, he was national champion in 2016, I believe. Yeah, two of those for, for the longest time or for quite a while. championships um, yeah two so, so strong um, both of them there they are and of course it's always cool to see them um, playing off against each other in a new format I actually haven't seen um, too much of either of those players in the new format um, I actually played against Alex um, in the semifinals of the Leipzig regional championships oh, okay. um, where he was really um, yeah still using <laughs> that tapu bulu good game <laughs> uh, yeah, they were they were pretty messy um, I have to admit <laughs> Um, but from Miguel, it's been quite a long time um, since the last time that I have uh, seen him play. And um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting seeing what a player like Miguel, who has played in so many different formats, um, who has done so well in the past. Um, I mean, what, what is well, like what is he going to bring? Because like it's always interesting to seeing some of those um, super strong players. Like, what do they think about a format like this? Are they going to play like super offensively? Are they going to like take a slow route and play like more defensively? And um, yeah, looking forward to seeing what Miguel has brought to the table here. Same, and it was something I was talking to Davide about in our interview was how he sort of got all his experience and expertise, and that's what made him sort of utilize in the game so well. And you've just sort of mentioned that both Miguel and Alex they're so experienced players, particularly Alex working his way up through seniors division. And it's going to be interesting to see from all of their experience. Bottom right Pokemon, that is a Pokemon that I haven't seen in quite a while there. The Primarina? Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now you did actually uh, spoil it, but... <laughs> that's a little spoiler to you guys. Yeah, that's fine. So anyway, it looks like um, Alex actually going to um, go with a pretty interesting team. Not like um, anything I've really seen before with Bronze. And also a Pokemon that I know Alex has really liked. Um, really piloted it through the entirety of the 2016 season. Um, either with the dual primals um, or also with Groudon and Xerneas. So though he was more of a player that really liked to have both the Kyogre and the Groudon on his teams. And um, yeah, here we are at the Primarina in color in the bottom right. <laughs> um, another one of those starter Pokemon, just like the Incineroar that Alex also has on his team, that got one of those hidden abilities released. And um, yeah, we also had to look up the name because we, we, we weren't voice. quite sure what <laughs> the exact... Uh, of course we knew what it did, but we weren't quite sure. So Liquid Voice is the name of the ability that Primarina acquired now. And um, yeah, that turns all sound-based moves into water-type moves. Um, there is some interesting um, occasions where that also makes a difference with something like Parish Song when it's used against a Pokemon with Storm Drain. Um, but really, um, the key move that Primarina has uh, going for it is Hyper Voice. So I'll obviously go to a water type move, get that same type attack bonus and just deal out so much damage. But let's have a little breakdown of the teams now that they are fully on your screen. Miguel will be bringing a Ferrothorn, Tapu Koko, Salamence, Landorus, Milotic and Charizard. Whereas Alex will be bringing Gengar, Tapu Bulu. He loves that Tapu Bulu. Oh, certainly. Incineroar, Bronzong, Landorus and the Primarina that we just mentioned. Yeah, and um, on Miguel's side, as we were saying, um, the team that he's using with the Ferrothorn and the Landorus Therian and the Salamence, so two Pokemon with Intimidate, two potential Mega Pokemon in the Salamence and the Charizard, and then also Milotic, a Pokemon that Miguel has really used um, a lot in the past. Uh, he has used it in 2015 to good success, um, and really, like, uh, it looks like Miguel kind of going with some of the Pokemon that he has had success with in the past, but then also adding some new Pokemon, and I haven't actually seen too much of him after, uh, of course, his very big win in London. Um, he didn't really play too much after um, the Melbourne International Championships, I believe, last season, so now though he's back here and um, yeah, wants to get some more of those championship points uh, to qualify for the Pokemon World Championships, of course. Whereas Alex, on the other hand, already qualified, um, I think currently maybe like um, fifth in CP in Europe. Very high up Europe. on that chart. 
Exactly. And for very good reasoning. Well, I am delighted to see the pre Marina join the field straight away for Alex Gomez, paired up with that bronze on we also mentioned earlier, as Miguel is going for the more common pair that we see with Salamence and Tapu Coco, very popular Pokemon in this format so far. Obviously, Electric Terrain will be the dominant force here on the field, going to make everything yellow and electrical, something pre Marina will, you know, have to certainly be wary about, being a slower Pokemon as well. Um, and Intimidate is going to be fired off against that bronze on. Yeah, and um, the pre Marina, it's not just like a joke or a bluff or something. Alex is actually going to bring it to this battle, so that's also uh, something where oh, the, there is a Pokemon in my opponent's team preview, I have no idea what they're doing, but then, yeah, if they don't bring it, it probably, like, doesn't matter too much anyway, but no, this Prima Arena is a core piece of Alex's strategy here, and it looks like he probably is looking to try and set up a Trick Room here with his Bronze on, um, and then fire off some of those powerful moves that the Prima Arena can, um, of course, also being a Fairy type, meaning that it has a decent matchup against that Salamence. Exactly, but we're not going to see what it goes for this turn. Alex is going to switch it out for the Incineroar. Going to be able to fire off and intimidate against the opposing Salamence and obviously have that fake out pressure going into the next turn. Uh, it be interesting to see if he is going for something like the Trick Room strategy with that Bronzong, and if so, Incineroar is a great Pokemon to have on the field. But instead, it's going to be a Protect, perhaps wanting the fake out to set up the Trick Room in the next turn. Whereas Miguel wants to go straight onto the offensive, going to go and activate the Electrium Z on his Tapu Koko, fire off a really powerful Gigavolt Havoc in the Electric Terrain. Yeah, so Miguel not here to joke around, uh, just going for a Z-move turn 1 there, and um, let's see where it is going to hit. Uh, he could try and double target the, par uh, the Bronzong to prevent any sort of Trick Room from coming up, but instead it's going to hit into the Incineroar. That should do a lot of damage, in fact, getting the gets clean the KO. KO there. So poor Incineroar switching in there, but it's going to be KO'd straight away as Salamence goes for a oh, Roar. Wow. So no Mega Evolution from the Salamence, but obviously Roar is such a great way to prevent any kind of Trick Room. Unless you've got something like Redirection on your team, you're not going to be able to stop the Roar from going off that turn at all. Wow, that turn could not have gone any better for Miguel. He was able to get rid of one Pokemon of his opponent and then also roared out what was going to be a Trick Room. And Alex is already down with his back against the wall. Since he did lose the Incineroar, that also means that there is no way for him to like uh, go for a fake out and Trick Room play this turn. So once again, uh, with Roar on the Salamence, even for the next turn, it uh, looks like Miguel will be safe from Trick Room, like, or he will be able to prevent Trick Room from going up. And if his Salamence is a Mega variant, then he will also be able to do, um, or to knock out the Tabu Bulu if he wants to do that. And um, there's not really much Alex can do against the Salamence at the moment. Um, Bronzong could, of course, go for an attack here, but at the same time, I mean, uh, what is Bronzong going to do here? Uh, Gyro Ball probably won't do too much, um, or Psychic, which is an alternative attack that uh, some of those uh, Bronzong carry nowadays. Um, yeah, shouldn't really do too much, and it looks like Miguel really has figured out a way uh, with that Salamence and the Tabu Coco to just put on so much pressure on his opponent in the first turn that Alex teams just, like, crumbled a little bit under all the pressure and uh, Miguel in a fantastic position. Exactly, the Tapu Bulu switching in here, obviously it's got the grassy terrain up, but it doesn't want to be facing off against the Salamence at all. Obviously it can do some good damage to the opposing Tapu Coco, but as you mentioned that Alex doesn't really have anything on the field at the moment that can stop that Salamence going for another Roar if he wanted to. Um, interesting enough, he chose not to Mega Revolve at the first turn, so he's you know potentially preserving that Intimidate um, for later on in the game. And we're gonna see Ferrothorn jump straight into the field as well here. You know, just speaking of the Mega Revolution, Salamence does want to opt for it this turn. I think you are quite right, Marcus, in predicting that he might be targeting down that Tapu Bulu and just wants to get it off the field. But it won't be this turn as it goes straight for a Protect. Doesn't want to take any flying type damage here. As Salamence will go for, I believe, with a double edge into mm -hmm. that Protect. So no damage coming out there. But Bronzong will go for a Trick Room this turn. So great switch in there from Miguel. He's got that Ferrothorn on the field yes. in the Trick Room environment. Tapu Bulu is still not safe. Yeah, really covering for all options here. Miguel, of course, I was probably thinking like, huh, okay, my opponent is pretty light going for a Trick Room, but he also has to watch out um, for that potential Roar, so maybe he's just not going for the Trick Room at all and will just like attack or something. But instead, by going for an attack into the Tapu Bulu and also switching in the Ferrothorn, Miguel was really preparing for any scenario, because now uh, the Tapu Bulu just protected, and we already know that Primarina is in the back, so um, that is not a Pokemon that can really take those double edges. So if um, Ferrothorn wants to go ahead and, as we're seeing, just ha uh, like launch a Gyro Ball, into the Tapu Bulu, that is going to do a lot of damage. We are actually seeing a Shattered Z-move, Psyche. Shattered Psyche, coming out from that Bronzong. Okay, that is going to do a little bit of damage against that uh, Salamence, I would assume. So maybe Alex trying to double um, up into the Salamence to prevent it from attacking, but um, yeah, we also need to see 
Oh, it's actually oh, into the Ferrothorn. Okay. So this is going to do a good amount of damage here. I do love seeing the item choice there onto on the Bronzong, because obviously if you wanted to go for something like the Trick Room, that's always a great option for him to have there. Going to be a superpower, though, coming out from this Tapu Bulu, a double into the opposing Ferrothorn. Obviously going to lower Tapu Bulu's defenses, but it did manage to survive that Gara Ball, hmm. you know, doing the massive amount of damage that that Shadow Psyche sadly did not do to the Ferrothorn. It's going to be another double edge. It's going to be a double edge coming out from the um, Salamence, though, that did manage to survive and will pick up the KO on the Tapu Bulu. So, sadly, Alex Gomez, the Pokemon that he loves so much, has already returned to him early on in this game. Yeah, it looks like Alex was going for uh, like a Hail Mary attempt in order to knock out that Ferrothorn, which, of course, he cannot really deal with anymore. He knows that. We know that. His Incineroar mm -hmm. is gone. Uh, oh, the Primarina is not going to do it. So, he wanted to double up with, uh, with the Shattered Psyche, revealing that he has the Z-Move and the Superpower, hoping that maybe one of the two with, would land a critical hit, or that maybe um, the damage of the two together would be enough to knock out that Ferrothorn, but instead, no. Um, Ferrothorn's still hanging in there, and um, thanks to the grassy terrain, also recovering a little bit, so even in this next turn, the Bronzong won't be able to get the KO there with, with what we would assume um, is Psychic. Um, so it looks like, uh, yeah, Miguel just keeping his composure there, having the Ferrothorn stay on the field for yet another turn, um, and it doesn't look like there's anything Alex can do. If, on the other hand, Alex was able to knock out the Ferrothorn, then his Primarina actually could have been in a nice position there against the Salamence and against the Tapu Koko. Um, however, uh, yeah, both the Tapu Koko and the Salamence also can do a lot of damage on the Primarina, which uh, we haven't seen um, which uh, set or which item it is running. So It's still a mystery at the moment, this Primarina, as it did switch out in turn one. But as well with this Ferrothorn, if it you know wants to protect and regain a little bit more grassy terrain, it then could be in a position, like you were saying, Bronzong and Primarina can't really threaten it at all. It could be in a position to start firing off some Leech Seeds and just set up in this game, just yeah. stall it out and just get that victory from Miguel. We're going to see a switch, though. We're going to see um, the fourth Pokemon on Miguel's team going to be that Milotic going to join the field. And Ferrothorn will go for the protect here, just wants to get a little bit more grassy terrain that Alex's Tapu Bulu kindly set up for him. And it will also protect him from that Psychic from the um, Bronzong. Going to be an attack coming out there from the Primarina. Um, didn't get to see what it was, but now, thanks to it, thankfully, it was a double target. does reveal itself to be Hyper Voice, which, thanks to um, its Liquid Voice ability, would have been a Water-type attack. Not the kind of move you really want to be when you're facing down Milotic and Ferrothorn. Yeah, and also... Um uh, revealing its item now to be a life orb, but even with that, not dealing too much damage to that melodic at all. And as you were suggesting, um, yeah, with a Frothorn, just going for a protect there. There's no need for Miguel to really like pick up the pieces just now. He can play it a little bit safer, also bringing the melodic, another Pokemon that Alex can't really deal with. And now we have two Pokemon on the field that Alex can't really deal with, so. I wonder how long this is going to take um, <laughs> Miguel to just get the knockouts, but Alex can probably also just forfeit because he knows that there is no way uh, whatsoever for him to um, to win this game. On the other hand, maybe he wants to like find out a little bit more about Miguel's team, about what the items are on the Melodic and the Frothorn. Um, and yeah, we're just going to wait and see, but yeah, it looks like Miguel uh, will just like dominantly uh, take this first game. Exactly. I think if you're Alex right now, you will be sort of just trying to utilize all those extra seconds. You know you can't really about this game one but you might be thinking ahead to game two as well utilizing every second you've got about what you want to change up in your strategy mm -hmm. going to be a protect from that pre-marina going to buy it a little bit more time on the field at the moment as Ferrothorn goes for an attack into that slot obviously thanks to the protect not going to be dealing any damage and a scold is going to be fired out from that Milotic going into the bronze on doing a little bit of chip damage but will also get the burn so something else that's going to speed up this game for him even more trick room comes out from the bronze on though just going to reverse up the speed, so the Ferrothorn isn't going to be as speedy as it was previously. Yeah, so of course, um, once again, Alex now attempting to d uh, knock out this pesky Ferrothorn. Uh, maybe with a double um, up here with, like, I don't know, Moonblast and um, Psychic could be enough, but on the other hand, we're seeing so much recovery from this Ferrothorn um, that I don't think um, Alex yeah, has any option of getting that knockout here, and once again, Miguel just, like, taking his time. There's no really no need for him to speed things up too much and of course also if Alex protects his Pokemon then there's not really much he can do um, so Alex just like hanging in there maybe wants to see a little bit more like some more damage calculations against that Ferrothorn and um, is probably also thinking about the second game already because um, if you have a look at Alex's team um, it really struggles to uh, to take out that Ferrothorn uh, we have of course the Incineroar but yeah Miguel perfectly called that switch in or he was just going for a for a lot of damage in that slot, um, no matter what was going to switch, and maybe the Tabu Bulu um, could have taken it a little bit better, but um, switching in the Incineroar into the Electricum Z um, boosted um, 
Gigavolt Havoc just ended the game, like, it didn't end the game on the spot, but it made it very, very difficult for Alex to knock out that Frothorn. Really put him at such a strong disadvantage, and he sort of lost it for free. It didn't even get any kind of moves off, unfortunately. Going to be a Moonblast, though, coming out from this Premier into the Ferris on the single target. Going to do a little bit more damage than Hyper Voice does, so a good switch up there. Um, and it's going to be the Psychic coming out from the Bronzong. So doubling into this Ferris on, Alex really just wants to get it off the field. But unfortunately, not enough for him to pick up the KO here. And it's going to be a strong Power Whip going straight yeah. into that Pre Marina. Easily picks up the KO. Yeah, very powerful indeed. And um, that is um, another one. Actually, the first victim um, that falls to Ferrothorn's leaves slashing <laughs> around. Uh, but now, uh, again, it's just a question of time here. And Alex also knows it. But he probably came up also already like... Um, yeah, indicating on the, the um, indicating that he wants to forfeit this turn by signing Sign the match, the match or yeah. not signing <laughs> it, but um, yeah, making it so that his opponent is going <laughs> to win the first game. So um, yeah, Alex really coming, trying to figure out what he can do in the second game already. And once again, the Incineroar, uh, he's definitely going to bring Incineroar, mm -hmm. um, no questions about that. But exactly, like the way he wants to play it is probably going to change a little bit. Um, and on the other hand, Melodic though, one of the perfect counters to Incineroar, not only because it is a water type, but also because of um, competitive, of course, <laughs> being able to um, just really keep out Ferrothorn, uh, sorry, to protect Ferrothorn by keeping out um, Incineroar from, from the game. From just switching in freely. So, um, yeah, really nice throwback here with Melodic and Ferrothorn <laughs> to some of the teams that we've seen in previous seasons, like in 2015, for example. Uh, but with so much Incineroar around, I think actually this could be, um, like this could have some potential and Alex already had to suffer a little bit there and um, yeah, we didn't even see that combination uh, be played out to its full extent. Um, instead, the roar on the Salamence was really what changed the game so, so significantly early on. But at the same time, we also have to wonder that even if the Trick Room got up, um, with Ferrothorn and Melodic waiting in the back for Miguel, I'm not sure if um, there was really too much that um, Alex could have done even if he was able to um, to set up the Trick Room. So, um, a really strong play coming out from Miguel, who has shown that even though he didn't really, uh, he didn't participate in the highest stages or like the highest stakes, or we didn't see him or like on seen stream him so much recently. for quite a while, uh, he still has what it takes and he can still compete with the best. Exactly, he hasn't gone anywhere, he's back in full force here, gonna jump into game two. But as well, you know, Talking about Milotic, when Intimidate finally came out in Cineroar, everyone was so excited about it. It was finally the ability that you wanted. You've got Fake Out yep. and Intimidate, and a great typing with Fire Dark as well. And I think everyone did kind of predict Milotic might be on the rise here a little bit. But it's not only in Cineroar that Alex has to really sort of think about in um, terms of that Milotic. He also has Landorus. Yes. So he has a lot of Intimidate options, and that's a Pokemon that you love to be able to just switch in constantly and just whittle down your opponent. But if you have that Milotic on the field, you're really going to have to think about it twice. So I'd love to see how Alex is going to play around it. Obviously he has the Tapu Bulu, yep. which is you know so strong against Milotic, but he has to make sure that he doesn't, again, lose that Pokemon too easy. It took a Garable really, really early on. We saw it had Superpower though, so mm -hmm. that's a good answer to the opposing Ferrothorn. But even then, because it sort of gets weakened, um, it can be really hard to sort of keep Tapu Bulu at its strong nature that it wants to be. Helped by the terrain though, of course. Yes, so... One more thing to add to that um, equation, where it's like Ferrothorn and Melodic staring out against Tapu Bulu and Incineroar, which would be favorable for Alex, um, it's only favorable if he has the speed advantage. And mm. um, since Melodic and Ferrothorn are both naturally pretty slow, um, he has the advantage if there's no Trick Room up. However, his entire team is really based around Trick Room, um, setting up with Bronzong and then having the Primarina, so it looks like... Um, yeah, the, just the way the speed uh, matches up with Miguel's Ferrothorn against um, Alex's team um, will make him want to switch up his strategy significantly, where setting up Trick Room is not his prime um, target anymore, because even if he set it up, um, there's the Ferrothorn waiting there for Miguel, so it's, an, it's a tough spot here for Alex, and I think his team definitely has a tough matchup here against what Miguel uh, brings to the table, but on the other hand, Alex is a very good player, um, it's still not as easy. You can't just rely on having like a team advantage. You also need to play it out well. So Miguel isn't going to um, just think like, oh, hey, I have Roar and Salamence. Yeah, that just beats your team. It's not as easy. So um, it certainly isn't. And you know, you can see that Alex has already mixed it up here a little bit. He's gone for Bronzong and Gengar. A little bit of a throwback to the 2016 teams that we used to see around quite a lot. As Miguel has gone for the Landorus and Tapu Koko. So. If you're looking at Miguel's side of the field, there's no Intimidate coming out from Alex at the moment. He's really got a really strong offensive sort of um, presence on the field at the moment. Going to switch out and bring in his Tapu Bulu, though. Once again, the Pokemon that he loves so much. Going to bring that Grassy Train to the field, which is going to weaken any damage that Tapu Coco goes for. 
Gengar is going to, I believe, Mega Revolve in that turn, if I can get my Spanish correct, and it mm -hmm. was. So Gengar's going to Mega Revolve, and the interesting thing here is it's now trapped in both of Miguel's Pokemon. So unless yep. Landorus has something like U-Turn, it's going to be staying on the field here. Going to be a Protect straight away from that Gengar, though. Doesn't want to take any damage from these Pokemon. Um, and we're going to see the Z-Move come out straight away once again from Miguel. It's going to be that Kick of Havoc once again. Yes, so um, looks like no choice Scarf on this uh, Landorus on Miguel's side. Instead, the Tabu Coco outspeeding it here going for uh, the Gigavolt Havoc, no matter where it is going to hit uh, the Gigavoltio Destructor, <laughs> um, it's not going to do all too much damage to the Gengar, of course, protecting here in Tabu Bulu, having a resistance and also um, resetting the terrain means that it will also recover a little bit at the end of the turn, but what does the Landorus do? Um, we are seeing an... It looked like it was power, Earth Power, yes. yeah. Special Landorus has been a Pokemon that has really sort of crept up over the past sort of month or so, um, often being paired up with something like Sludge Bomb or Hidden Power Ice. But, you know, historically, Landorus was, you know, really physically offensive. Um, but interestingly enough, having that um, Earth Power on there would do huge amounts of Gengar. But, you know, with we were talking a lot about Intimidate and Cineroar. Yep. If you're having a Special Landorus, it's not going to worry about that at all. Certainly. So, um, once again, Miguel proving that he is, like, still... Um, at the in He's still in the, in the loop, in the <laughs> loop about everything. And um, now though, Alex was the one who was uh, was able to establish a strong position. However, you know what another move is that Special Landorus carries quite often? Sludge Bomb. So maybe this um, Tabu Bulu isn't as safe as we all thought because if Sludge Bomb was coming out from the Landorus, um, then well, that just outspeeds and KOs the Tabu Bulu. So Alex has to watch out here. He cannot um, he cannot really lose the Tabu Bulu <laughs> easily. So he's going to withdraw it. I mean, this is a great Pokemon to switch in. The Steel-type Bronzong, if it is Sludge Bomb, it's going to have zero effect on that Pokemon. Um, going to be a Thunderbolt coming out straight away from Tapu Koko, though. Going to do some damage on that Gengar, take it down to 50%, so it would be a two-hit KO. Speaking of Sludge Bomb, though, however, one's going to be fired off from Gengar, straight back into Tapu Koko, and this time will pick up the KO. Um, from Landorus, it's going to be an Earth Power, going to go straight into that Gengar, and will pick up the KO where Tapu Koko managed to take it down to 50%, so a double into that Pokemon there. I think Miguel really wanted to get rid of that Pokemon, yes. so that he has the utility to switch out freely and get his ball positioning the way he wants it. Yeah, nicely done here by Miguel, identifying that the Tabu Bulu on Alex's side wasn't as safe uh, and that Alex couldn't risk losing it because he needed to keep it around for the Melodic later on. But now, um, with Gengar being off the field, um, the, the Landris and what we would expect to be Melodic and Ferrothorn in the back for Miguel um, seems to be very problematic for Alex to deal with. Now the Gengar is gone, so there's no more trapping mm -hmm. and he didn't use the one opportunity he had to go for an attack with um, his Tabu Bulu to knock out the landers of, an, of his opponent. He, we were talking about this, he kind of is forced to bring the Incineroar because of the Frothorn, has to switch it in here, which will activate the competitive ability from Melodic, making it even more powerful. And yes, there is still the Tabu Bulu in the back for Alex, and um, he still has an option to knock out the Melodic, but for the time being, the Landorus on Miguel's side is really um, threatening that Tabu Bulu away. So Alex has to uh, maybe take out the Landorus before or um, get Miguel to switch it out. And Miguel, on the other hand, now has that very strong Melodic and doesn't want to lose his position here. Well, Lander is going straight for a Protect here. Doesn't want to take a potentially a Fake Out or even a Knock Off from the opposing Incineroar. Instead, the Fake Out is going to go straight into that Milotic so it cannot use its boosted attacks this turn as Trick Room comes out from the Bronzong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now this might be an opportunity for, for Alex to, say, double up into the Landers, for example. He could go for a um, Shared Psyche and a Flare Blitz to potentially get rid of Landers and then um, making it um, so that Miguel is down to his last two Pokemon, cannot switch any longer. And then Alex would need to try and reverse Trick Room again because uh, <laughs> he didn't, he wouldn't want the Ferrothorn to be super fast. Um, and then that could be one way for him to um, to try and win this game. However, on the other hand, Miguel is still is free to like um, attack the Incineroar with his Melodic that is boosted. So that is going to do a lot of damage. Might come close to knocking out the Incineroar. He probably wouldn't want to switch in his Ferrothorn just now because um, if it is hit by a Flare Blitz, then the Tabu Bulu that Alex still has in the back. Um, would have a field day, so <laughs> a, a big decision coming up in this turn, and um, we're not seeing any switches, and there is the Z move, and I would, the expect, Psyche once I would again. expect the double target into the Landorus from Alex. Exactly, just to try and get it removed from the field. At the end of the day, the Bronzong and Incineroar combined really won't be able to KO that Incineroar, so you just want to be able to, um, the Milotic even, you just yes. want to be able to get the KO onto this Landorus and remove from the field, but it actually, it's, into the it's going into that Milotic, just wants to get it off the field, um, see how much damage it does, not even, they just takes it down to about 50% there. As the knockoff comes out from the Incineral, though, oh. going to take it down to 11 and remove the Wiki Berry. So unfortunately for Milotic, it's not going to be able to get that recovery that it loves, but it will be able to almost pick up the KO on that opposing 
um, Incineroar and just, you know, just to mock the Milotic, it activates its own barrier but that it just removed from Milotic. could Milo be an Earth Power coming from the Landorus and that is what we're seeing. So this Incineroar has to take two super effective moves and even and with that Dicky Berry cannot hang in there. And that is probably um, Alex's last hope um, in dealing with that Ferrothorn. So, yeah, that damage on the Milotic wasn't quite enough. Once again, the Bronzong just... Um, just a little bit shy. Um, in the first game, he tried to use the Shadow Psyche, um, doubling up into the Ferrothorn. That didn't quite work. Um, and now in the second game, we're seeing um, the same thing happening against the Melodic. So, yeah, Miguel's Pokemon just trained very nicely defensively, um, taking those attacks. Um, and Bronzong, on the other hand, of course, also not really known to be um, an attacker. No, that's very true. And I think we sort of mentioned earlier with the Shattered Psyche option, obviously it's got the Psyche MZ. That could also be really well utilized for Trick Room. Yeah. Um, so it's a good item choice there on the Bronzong. But I think you're right there, Marcus. He's got rid of the um, Incineroar on Alex's side. So if that Ferrothorn is in the back, it's going to have an absolute field day here. Um, interesting enough, though, um, with Incineroar, it's always interesting what item it has. If mm -hmm. it's got the Berry, if it's got a Assault Vest, and you know, if Alex had maybe gone for an Assault Vest, that turn could have played out a little bit different on I the option choice. there might still be one way for Alex to take this, which would be um, if his uh, Tapu Bulu had like Bulk Up or Sword Dance, he could knock out the Melodic this turn and predict the switch um, into the Ferrothorn setup, his Tapu Bulu right now. And then, um, which is what he's actually doing. Yeah, okay. goes for Sword Dance. So I think, we I think we've seen Alex use Sword Dance Tapu Bulu in the past, Mike potentially been at mm -hmm. London Internationals last year. Uh, but he has now got obviously the attack boost on there and as we've seen it is packing superpower. That can obviously really threaten that Ferrothorn. Yeah, and um, now the Landorus is coming back in. Of course, another round of Intimidate. Uh, grassy Terrain is actually over. Based on the damage that Ferrothorn's Dirtball did in the previous game, I think there might be a chance that uh, Tabu Bulu can take the hit here. And um, yeah, then maybe with Horn Leech he could get some recovery um, from attacking the Landorus, but then again, with grassy terrain not being a thing anymore, might not be enough to get the KO. And um, superpower, on the other hand, of course, could knock out the Ferrothorn. So there's still a couple of questions um, that are asked here because um, if this was coming down to a late game, where um, like if the Ferrothorn goes down, then Miguel cannot deal with the Bronzong anymore. He really needs to maintain the Ferrothorn to be able to stall out Bronzong with Leech Seeds. And um, so let's see. We are seeing a protector co coming out from the Tapu Bulu. Um, no protect though from um, from Miguel's side. It's just going to be a Psychic going straight into that Landorus, just wants to whittle it win. Actually Ooh. does a huge amount of damage, takes it down to almost 50%. Wow. And we're going to see why I believe there was a Sludge Bomb yes. going into the Tapu Bulu. So a great protect there from Alex. But as well, it'd be interesting to see, I don't believe we know what um, ability this Bronzong has yet, whether it's Heatproof or Levitate. Uh -huh. And if it is Levitate, something like, you know, Sludge Bomb does no damage, Earth Power is not going to do any damage. So this Bronzong, as you are mentioning... Yeah, I don't, I don't think it got uh, Grassy Terrain recovery, so it should be uh, Levitate. Ah, well there we go. So that's something that, you know, Miguel really does have to think about here. He needs to be able to remove this from the field with that Ferrothorn. It's going to be a Protector coming up from his Landorus, wants to be able to utilize the Sludge Bomb later on. As Garibald just fires off straight into the Tapu Bulu, it yeah. does this survive... Should be, this should be Psychic into the Landorus yep. and another Sword Dance Protect, probably, or just the Superpower if he thinks that that is going to be enough. There is the Superpower coming out into the Ferrothorn. It well, is it's not, not enough, quite enough. Though. Living on only 26, and obviously um, the Tapu Bulu now is going to be taking an attack drop from that, and it will be able to be KO'd by, obviously, the hmm. spiky barbs on that opposing Ferrothorn. So Alex down to his last remaining Pokemon here, facing down Ferrothorn and Landorus. Uh, I think I would have liked to see um, a Sword Dance here instead from Alex's side, because then the next turn he could have protected the Tapu Bulu and um, yeah, knocked out the Landorus with another Psychic, and then um, have the guaranteed KO on the Ferrothorn with Superpower since... Um, yeah, the Trick Room is over, um, and I think Alex also might have realized that in that situation that uh, Sword Dance probably would have been the correct play here, um, and that is really only possible because of the um, special defense drop allowing his Tapu Pulu, uh, his Bronzong to get the guaranteed KO on his opponent and uh, seeing Landorus Therian, um, but now um, Bronzong still in there, he could still knock, uh, take this game home, but... Um, yeah, if this Ferrothorn has Leech Seed and if that connects, then um, yeah, it should be able to probably just stall things out. Exactly. We can see that Landorus cannot touch that Bronzong at all, and it is going to be KO'd by another Psychic. Um, so it's going to be these two Steel types facing off against each other, Ferrothorn versus the Bronzong. And I, we sort of saw how much the Shattered Psyche did to Ferrothorn the previous game, so Psychic on its own really yep. isn't going to be doing too much. So if Miguel can get a Leech Seed connect, he's going to be in a really great position to just protect, regain loads of health, and stall out this game here. Definitely. Of course, um, Psychic has already done once. Maybe can get another special defense drop. Nope, we're not seeing it. And there <laughs> is the Leech Seed. It does connect, and that is the handshake. Both players know that um, there's no way that this Bronzong can, um, can still do it. Of course, uh, the animation are still playing out, but Alex is already 
like packing his stuff, he knows that yeah, this didn't go very well. Yeah. He had <laughs> he kind of had the game on the board. Of course, Miguel could have tried to go for a double protect the next turn if he caught Alex's moves correctly. Um, but yeah, I really think that uh, going for the sword dance in that position um, was the right play there. Um, unfortunately, Alex wasn't able to spot it right then, and um, yeah, has all the rights in the world to <laughs> be unsatisfied with how this went out. But on the other hand, Miguel also. Um, played it pretty well. Um, I l really liked what Alex was trying to do in the second game, though. He really came up um, with a new plan, not going, not relying on the Primarina, identifying that Brawthorn is such a strong threat that you cannot ignore it at all. Um, so instead, he brought the Gengar. He was able to trade off the Gengar against the Tapu Koko, and then making it a three versus three, setting up the Trick Room at the right time, calling out the moves of his opponent, um, and then also the fact that um, the Landorus of Miguel was a special variant with Earth yeah. Power and uh, Sludge Bomb really, really changed the matchup quite a bit because um, with Earth Power it could just freely target down the Gengar even in grassy terrain um, since Earth Power's base power isn't affected by that unlike Earthquake and then of course also really threatening the Tabu Bulu. So in kind of an, like an anti Tabu Bulu lander yeah, is coming out from true. Miguel <laughs> and um, in this particular matchup really proving to be very, very strong. Exactly, and you could see Alex was a little bit disheartened at the end of that game, but you know he still played really well. Yes. Uh, but he did have to adapt. It's a little bit like our game one, adapting to the Zen headbutt reveal, revealing that Landorus was a special variant, was something he had to really play around with the Sludge Bomb and his Tapu Bulu, yep. for example. Um, and like we were saying, you know there was a lot of ball positioning going on there, and the thing I found the most interesting was how Trick Room could go up to try and give you the advantage, but then Tekken had an answer for it, and he could just switch in his Ferrothorn and was able to, you know, then Trick Room wasn't what you wanted if you were Alex yes. Gomez. So it was an interesting ball position, a sort of power play amongst these slower type Pokemon. Um, and I think, unfortunately for Alex, um, Miguel was just able to utilize it a little bit better. He predicted all the right turns, particularly in that game one, switching in that Ferrothorn on the Trick Room go. And he was just able to sort of go from there, making his Pokemon the slowest, and he was able to whittle through. But a fantastic game from both players. And I'm sure, you know, Alex, with all of the experience, he's now at 1-1. You, you can be at 1-1 at this stage. Definitely. It's absolutely fine. You just keep winning. That's exactly. all you've got to do. <laughs> yes, and also one more thing um, to stress about the set that we just saw. Like, just w It's just pretty cool to see, uh, like with Trick Room, as you were saying, with those... Um, yeah, the, the speed advantage going back and forth, um, resetting Trick Room um, all the time. And there we have the players, like one last time, sitting there waiting for what is going to happen next. And um, I think we'll have a short interview with Miguel um, that I will do. And then, um, yeah, we'll hear it from him, of course, um, of how he has spent the last couple of um, months since the last time exactly. we saw him compete. Exactly, have a good catch up with him. And I want to know particularly, I think you have to ask him, what was he thinking of pre-Marina when you saw that yes, team preview? Yes, I will do that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we will be right back and with an interview with Miguel. And welcome back, guys. We're, I am here with Miguel, who was just able to beat um, Alex in a pretty exciting, also kind of short um, set, though. First of all, congratulations. How are you feeling after such a victory here? Thank you very much. I'm feeling, feeling pretty well because um, I need to do well this tournament to qualify to the day one mm -hmm. of Worlds. So I was pretty nervous uh, playing against Alex in round one, round two. Yes. It was like, oh, <laughs> oh, this is going to be so hard. But yeah. it, it has gone well. <laughs> yeah, and one of the reasons um, of why it has gone well was also that your team has a couple of tricks here and there. Um, yeah. In the first game, the very first turn, uh, we did see Roar on your Salamence being yeah. weird, uh, phasing out the Bronzong and um, preventing it from setting up Trick Room. And in the second game, your Landorus was one of the key components there, um, being able to like not use uh, like Earthquake, which would have been pretty bad against the Tapu Bulu, but instead with Sludge Bomb and Earth Power. So um, do you want to comment a little bit about um, what made you choose those particular sets on those two Pokemon? Yeah, of course. Um, the main reason was... Um, a lot of people uh, have seen the the team in my uh, YouTube videos and the other streams. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, anyone knows the the sets, so I'm going to change them completely. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, okay, um, Landorus, uh, special Landorus is pretty strong now with Chapa Bulu, uh, Mega Gengar. Yes. And uh, with um, Landorus b uh, being uh, out of knockoff was like, okay, I need uh, something to uh, deal with the Snorlax, with Trick Room, and then I thought, oh, uh, Solomon's uh, can learn uh, Roar. Okay. And it was like, oh. <laughs> so, so, so those two changes happened like kind of at the same time, because yeah. with no knockoff on Landers anymore, you want you um, uh, included Roar now as an yeah. option. to deal mainly with the Snorlax, mm -hmm. but with Trick Room too. Okay, yeah, and that worked out pretty perfectly um, in those two games. Also yep. another question, um, did you know about like what Primarina did and what were you expecting when you saw it in Team Preview? I, I, have, um, I have seen some Primarinas testing uh, for this tournament. Um, Eric Rios, mm -hmm. uh, another uh, 
a friend of us yes uh, also like uh, it so um, uh, I, I have seen I expected the life orb and the hyper boys moonblast okay so it was not an, a surprise yeah, and then in the end, unfortunately for Alex, the Primarina didn't really do too much yeah. <laughs> um, because um, you were using the Frothorn. So I was uh, talking a little bit about how Melodic and Frothorn are two Pokemon that um, you have also used in the past or like from 2015, for example. Yeah. Um, is that something um, that you do where if like a new format comes around, you take a look back at what happened in the past and what worked for you and then um, try to go from there? Or did you just think that, oh, like right now, Frothorn is very good? Oh, um, the, the main idea for the entire team was um, from the uh, 2015 mm -hmm. uh, worlds my my world's uh, team yes and I used Ferrothorn, I used Melodic and I was like okay uh, this this core is pretty good in this format too so I I tried it and yeah <laughs> it worked pretty well yeah uh, so so far you're two and zero oh and you were already saying how you want to do well at this tournament um, yep. how many points are you at at the moment I have uh, mm, 170 approximately okay yeah. so. Um, Maybe if this tournament goes well, well, th that's it. But if not, I will try uh <laughs> to play a little bit more. Playing, yeah, to, to okay. try to get the, the CPs. Okay, nice. So um, one last question. Um, as you were saying, like last year, you won um, the London Internationals, of course, which was a very, very big success for you. Um, after that, um, you didn't compete as much in regionals, I think. Yeah, because um, I I had a pretty busy year mm -hmm. last year, so I was like, okay, I'm just going to to travel for the uh, the main tournaments. Yes. Um, to Australia last year, but uh, with the work, I couldn't get some uh, um, free days. Yes. So I was I like, see. okay, I d I have just to focus on two or three tournaments. Yeah, <laughs> but now um, you're here in Stuttgart, and you were already able to beat um, Alex, one of the best players at the moment. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing more from you um, over the course of the weekend. Best of luck to you, of course. And we'll much. hit it to a short break and then we'll be back with the third round. Bye.